And we are down here in Oklahoma and we are excited. It's the last day of our trip, which is a bummer, but we're here at Mike Wilbanks Reptiles. This is actually a banana sugar entry and there are a ton of ball pythons, but we're here for an actual cool event where a bunch of people are coming to tour the place, have a good time. Noah's doing a little comedy set later. We're doing a little talk later and we're gonna see some cool animals. So uh, buckle up for the last day of the trip. We're heading home tomorrow, but today is gonna be a banger. So it's pretty cool. Mike is actually doing a tour of his facility. Right now we're in the Green Tree Python room. A bunch of really cool Green Tree Pythons. He's also got a of course, a new Caledonia room with a bunch of geckos in it, and of course, the incubator room. So, everyone's getting a tour of the place. It's pretty cool. Uh, so, these animals are amazing, and it's a really cool event. I'm glad that we're here. Man, can you tell me a little bit about the snake yeah. over here? So, this is a, a paradigm rainbow boa. I don't know if you've ever heard of one before. No, this is the first time I've seen it, but I want to know more. So, it's a rainbow boa, and it's a morph called paradigm. Okay, and what's that paradigm about? Paradigm is, uh, it's like a paradox, but okay. you just, it's spelled a little differently. <laughs> 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 I love this idea. We've actually thought about this at the Reptarium, having a place where people could actually see in and see eggs hatching, whether it's ball pythons, colubrid eggs, you know, maybe Diddy and Dixie's eggs or something like that. So it's just pretty cool. Take a look, you see a little banana here, a normal head hatching out. So it's cool to do that again. I've been thinking about doing this at the Reptarium. So it's cool that Mike actually put this into effect here uh, and to kind of see it in real time. It looks perfect. So I definitely need to find a spot to do that. Of course, this is Mike's place. Everyone's just on tour looking around, stuff like that. These are all aisles and interestingly, enough he really dedicates his aisles to say like one aisle is just pies one aisle is just super fire stuff like that so it's very organized and you can see these are all animals that are uh, just hatched some are coming going out already uh, got more snakes here I mean it's a really massive facility of all pythons which is really quite amazing and uh, a lot of cool stuff I can't wait to just kind of dive in and start looking at animals time to look at some cool animals actually this is my buddy Jeff uh, you've been here for quite some time and I've known you forever so uh, so it's awesome to see you again what do you have here is this a freeway this is a super gravel pastel super gravel. leopard. Super gravel. Of course, the gravel is what makes the highway. So this is the super gravel, and then you said it's a leopard and a pastel. Pastel, yeah. absolutely wonderful animals. When these hatch out, oftentimes this is all like purpley. So as it's starting to get its bigger color and it's just looking beautiful, of course that's amazing. And because it's an incomplete dominant, also a lelic animal, everything you breed to this is gonna be gravel, which is nice because the gravel are a little bit difficult to tell between yellow bellies. So. Definitely, it's, it's so nice having a few more of these now so that we can have definite guaranteed animals for people. Exactly. Yeah. Because sometimes it's you'll be like, I think it's, it. yeah, you'll see, like, I think it's a gravel, but I'm not 100% sure because it looks a little bit like a yellow belly. And of course, the yellow bellies was a lelic to make the highway. So, regardless, absolutely stunning animal. All right, Jeff, I happen to say that this is one of my favorite morphs of all pythons. I love the way this one looks. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to say what it is, but I, I'm hoping I'm not wrong. Is this a hypo GHI Mojave? Hypo GHI Mojave fire. Ah, and it's got a fire gene to it, which probably makes it look a little bit better. Little so, more yeah, so I love smoky. the hypo GHI Mojave stuff and then yeah the fire really makes it cool so this is a, a beautiful animal here is this a boy this is a male this is the first visual of all of these things that we produced all right cool nice so you produced that so the first one you did of all and that's awesome we crafted this yeah that's a long <laughs> process but it is worth it because that thing is absolutely i still have his baby picture in my phone <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh isn't that cute it's like that. look at what i produce this is my baby that's awesome this is Jeff. work man no i know, you know it's beautiful dude i love it it's absolutely stunning all right this is a really good one and I can't even take a guess. The only thing I know that this is, is a clown and probably a pastel. Outside that, I don't know what else it is. What is it? It is a Pastave GHI clown. Oh, a Pastave GHI clown. So we've got a pastel, we've got a Mojave, we've got GHI, and we've got clown ball python. Wow, it's really interesting how it, it almost looks like stonewashed, mm -hmm. you know? It's a really, I love the way, it must be that GHI that influence. Yeah. When, when GHI and Mojave react with it, that's where all the big blowouts and big washed out areas come yeah. from. And it's so crazy too, because right ghi mojave or alelic and you've seen that one hypo that makes that pattern like that then you mix it into a clown like this and it just completely changes it i uh, would not have expected this to, to turn out this way but i absolutely love it that's a ripper we actually saw these two animals uh back in november here and they've grown quite a bit and i can all i can remember is that they had blackhead in them i don't remember what else they were they are blackhead mojave leopard 
and she het lavender. Oh my goodness gracious. And then this is a paradox. Right, so we so, get to see what it's gonna look like, right. most likely, once right. we get the visual expression of lavender. Wow, they, those two are ridiculous. I mean, just look at the color. I love it because it's a, it's kind of a smoother color that you don't typically see. I think that black-headed is what's bringing out that kind of really interesting, kind of almost coppery looking animal. Very, very cool. I love the paradox one. Of course, the paradox isn't something that's genetic, just makes a really cool looking animal. But you can definitely see how awesome it's gonna look when you get it all the way into banana. Those things are ridiculous. Look at this thing's head. That is so freaking awesome. Actually, an incubator number two here, where this is a lot of eggs. They actually have three incubators on facility, and uh, they've actually been rotating through them. So there's a bunch of babies, a lot of babies that are hatching. That's pretty impressive. So we're going to get a chance to take a look right off the rip. So gosh, already we've got a little pied here. Where we got a banana pied here. Banana pied, yellow belly to het pied. So okay. we've got this banana pied there. Yeah. Not a lot of color to tell anything else. Super high white Some though. Some color could come in and that could yep. be yellow belly later on. This could That's be yellow, yellow belly. belly. Yeah, yeah, definitely pied yellow belly here. Nice then we have hat. a couple of yellow belly hats. And some guy slow playing. Ooh, doggy, look at this. What do we got? This was our second attempt with just a three egg clutch for banana, mahogany, pied, two leopard, het pied. Oh my gosh. And I think we're looking at, obviously, a leopard. I think it's just a really dark leopard. Could be a dark pie. leopard, yeah. yeah it seen could a few be sandy, but yeah. Like, but then shouldn't, this one. Shouldn't be any scent. I think this is the banger. I think yep. this is the banana leopard mahogany pied. Oh my gosh, that's a, such a good animal. Yeah, you can kind of see that's... mahogany coming through right here for sure. So yeah, it looks good. It's a boy, boy. too. Yeah, Ooh, that's, that's a razor. We, we whiffed a 10 egg clutch from her oh. sister. And then we got the three egg clutches like, Bram. yeah, no way. <laughs> but the odds end up working out in your yeah, favor in this they, one. That's they, a beautiful animal. Amazing. So that's cool. That, that could be a world's first. I haven't ever seen one before. So that's pretty cool to see that right off the rip. So this fire. is a super fire. So what is this? Cause we've got a banana in here. Banana fire it looks like, right? Right. Okay. Stop it, you little monkey. And then, of course, these are the black-eyed leucistics, which are the super fires. Absolutely stunning animals, for sure. And, of course, that could be a super fire banana, too. You really can't tell. Can you tell what the this, eyes are something? This one is. Okay, so the reddish the eyes. eyes. The red ah, eyes. gotcha. And uh, I've been talking about this technique a lot. Uh, I take a little pin light, and you can blast it through their head. And really? the eyes are like bloody red. On oh. Every banana has red eyes if you do that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's a good technique. I hadn't even heard about that. So we'll definitely be using that in the future for sure. And the hardest ones are bells. Speaking of, <laughs> ooh, this is actually really pretty though. This is what, banana, lesser, enchi maybe? Yeah, these are actually, uh, they, they require a little closer examination, but these could be bell super fires. Bell super fires. Uh -huh. Now that's interesting. That might even be banana. So. Might even be banana. These wow. I have to look at a long time. Yeah, that's amazing <laughs> though. That's crazy. And of course the bell is the blue-eyed leucistic and then the super fire is the black-eyed leucistic. And then of course you've got Enchi in here and stuff like that. Like I said, that looks like a- That's a nuclear a, yeah. Enchi there. Oh, it's a nuclear Enchi. Yeah, so gotcha. that's fire butter Enchi. Fire butter Enchi. And there's yep. just the Frenchy, the fire Enchi. Gotcha. Perfect. Looks like we've Ooh, got that's pretty. some nice stuff here. Oh my gosh. Now are these freeways or highways? Um, we did pastel freeway to yellow bellies. So okay, these are so, freeways. So freeways. And look at those animals right there. Whoo. Jeez, those are so pretty. Pretty good odds too. Oh my gosh. Those are beautiful. I've always loved the pastel freeway stuff. That is just ridiculous. Now that is a snake right there. Oh my goodness. I mean, can you imagine? So, Jeff, you get to come in the incubator every day and do this, right? Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty awesome to it see these guys. Amazing. Oh my gosh, I can't. Yeah, you know, I can't believe Mike isn't in here. You know, doing it every morning because I couldn't let someone else do it. But uh, that's just absolutely incredible. But I'm sure Mike is plenty busy on his own doing his other stuff. I trust me. But uh, but I love seeing that. And these guys are great. So uh, so Jeff, thanks for showing us. This You're is welcome. absolutely awesome, man. This is oh my god, having the time of my life. coming here. I mean, absolutely beautiful animals here. So what do we have with this genetics? This is a pastel inchy sugar yellow belly. 
pastel Angie sugar yellow belly. And it's interesting, it's kind of got a big ring on it. Almost looks like it has pies, but this is actually something that happens with the sugar gene sometimes. And just mixing all that type of stuff together is unbelievable. Uh, what would be the next thing you would do with this? Well, we put a super gravel pastel to it, I okay, think, so already. Okay, yeah, so you could- Or it's a super inchy OD asphalt. One of those. Okay, gotcha, right. <laughs> and then, remember. so then you could literally produce highways or freeways, I guess, depending on which one it is. And then, but then with all the other genes in it, which would be great because again, if you've got that super gravel or asphalt, you would have all highways or all freeways. And then all these other genetics could pass along. That can be amazing. That's beautiful. Of course, one of the things that's really amazing about this event is there's some other people in. You've got Jesse from Freedom Breeder. You've got Brian Cusco, formerly known as Cusco. Uh, of course, we've got Jess. We've got uh, the man Noah in the house. And we're just talking about this beautiful snake. Anyway, do me a favor. I'm putting a link in the description to these guys' accounts and stuff like that. Go show them some love please because they have some great content this is a very dark snake what is it uh, we have her labeled as IMG calico okay and there's even a video that Mike did on YouTube showing the snake and you can see in the video that she's not as dark then as she is now okay gotcha uh, she's actually produced a calico offspring we bred that offspring back to her to try and get this trait unfortunately we only had one egg hatch okay so I've got that baby set aside we'll see if it increases its IMG or this is a one-off animal. How great would it be to have a genetic IMG yeah, in I like Exactly, and the and IMG is just increasing melanin gene. So what happens is when they're born, they're basically normal, and as they get older, they increase the melanin to have this kind of dark city. Have you guys worked with them at all? I have a few like that, okay. uh, but just I have one that's a pastel xanthic, and then... Oh, so it's already gonna be dark, and then you yeah, get this. Like, I think we have them in our videos. Nice, and stuff. nice, nice. And, uh, yeah, we have, I think, one more. I just can't remember what it was. Oh, like, yeah. How about you, Brian? Well, that's one thing to consider is like, even your best laid plans, you get an animal that's you're hoping to reproduce in a few years, and then you go 15 years past by yeah. before you actually get to years. Oh, yeah. By the way, Jeff told us <laughs> they've been working on this for 15 years. So, for you guys just starting out, patience is important. Yeah. So, this is ironically a snake I haven't seen in a long time. I mean, I remember, was it a mirror that produced the first one? I don't even know. I think Amir Proust, these are shattering pattern, right? Yeah. And so what's the genetics behind it? Well, we picked up the female, say five or six years ago, okay. and she produced offspring with okay. a Mojave. Right. This is the normal version of the shatter, and we have a Mojave one too. Okay, good. So you gonna... think it's like incomplete dominant type of thing? Seems like it. Seems like it, we're gotcha. Gonna... Now, you know, obviously he's basically ready to breed. We'll get a little more size on between now and November, yeah. and you know, yeah. we'll put him to a small group of girls and see what we can what we can get going with it. Yeah, it's interesting because this is, again, it's probably been 10 or 12 years. You can see the shattering pattern is just kind of these dark blotching that goes on them. And about 10 or 15 years ago, uh, a guy named Amir Proust, the first ones, I believe, and uh, and then they kind of disappeared and I never saw anyone working with them. So it's really cool to see that you're back with the project and hopefully it'll be something cool because again, it hasn't been bred into anything. And the thing about ball pythons is you never know when you breed something like this that isn't like extremely crazy. Maybe you throw it to something like an Enchi or a, a you know, who knows, Champagne or you pop whatever the case is and you might produce something really wild so I'm so happy you guys are working with this guy again yeah we shelved their mom because she was a, a picky eater yeah and so she just kind of hung out and mm -hmm. ate once every month or two and just patience like you said yeah just patience and now here you go projects off, we're off and running all right so Jeff should be back here in a second he's got some uh, animal he said it's gonna be really really cool to check out so again everything we've seen from these guys have been amazing so what the yeah. heck are you doing? What do you mean? I've been doing this whole Where'd tour. You, what'd you do with Jeff? Is he over there? Oh, don't worry about Jeff. He's over there. Don't worry about it. What do we have here? Uh, this is actually an Oreo Creamsicle Supreme Deluxe Extendo Mago. Um, it's a little complicated. It is very, because I've never so, heard of any of those genes in ball pythons. Well, that's what makes Will Banks' collection so special. Yeah, obviously. He's <laughs> he's hiding this stuff. Now, I, I don't, that now, is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to take you through uh, the gene pool, all right? Okay, go so ahead. Obviously, you can see right here, that's the Oreo gene bleeding through right there. Yeah, yeah right. I can see that. You got that, you got the creamsicle, okay. you got the banana, right. and then the combination of all that super and the, all that other jazz and stuff right mm, there. Mm. Beautiful animal. Yeah. Uh, you can just tell, yep, it's a female. Okay. So, uh, you know, it'll breed nicely this year. Yeah. Uh, let me just give it's it a little a small though for a female. Oh, no, no, no. Look, oh, it's we, a dwarf. dwarf it's a dwarf breed. I forgot I had that there. You just feel it out. Mm. It's gonna produce about nine eggs or so. Nine so, eggs. Yeah, wow. yeah. It's gonna be like the size of corn snakes. Nothing crazy. A little bit, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, well, it's yeah. absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Can no I have problem. Jeff back, please? Yeah, I'll go on time. Thank goodness Jeff is back. <laughs> so we actually have. So we have. Uh, let's see. Banana cinnamon leopard. 
Noah's a strange cat. <laughs> yeah, uh, to yeah, say the so least. Banana, cinnamon, leopard. Banana, And we couldn't leopard. have imagined it being any darker it's than so it dark, is. Yeah. It almost could get a lot darker, but we'll yeah. see what we can do. No, that's really good. And again, I actually thought it might be blackhead because of how dark it is. Because cinnamon is great with banana, but with the, this particular one is really high contrast. And love all the black freckling in it. Absolutely wonderful. All right, guys, so it is time to go home. We had an absolutely amazing time on this trip. Let me know which one you like the best down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Right over here is a playlist. You can hit a couple videos. On this side, you can hit that subscription button. It would mean the world to me. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow. Woo!